And when I first started this, what I really didn't want to do was just take a standard motorcycle, um, which is incredible, and drop out the motor, or the engine, sorry, and put in a motor. Um, those bikes are designed to deal with certain dynamics inherent to the ICE engine. And this was an opportunity, opportunity to really look at something fresh. There's positives and negatives in each platform. Um, obviously the negative in this platform at the moment is battery technology, but it's probably the fastest evolving technology in the world right now. So I don't think that's a long-term negative. So I like to consider this bike that you can buy it as a 500cc bike. And then when you have the money or the desire or the skill, you can upgrade it to a 750cc bike. And then you can upgrade it to a thousand. It's quite accurate because we have three motors in here. So if you were to buy the basic kind of more commuter level, you could buy a lower, smaller range of batteries and a single motor, and that would get you around and do fine. That'd be a lot of, that'd be a great place for an entry level bike. You can add a second motor and double your torque. Pretty substantial. We can't do that to an ice bike. This battery pack system is designed um, obviously to be hot swappable and interchangeable. So as battery technology improves, we could make a version two set of batteries or version three. And at that point you could upgrade your bike and still keep the best suspension and all the customizing you did to the bike. So to me, that started opening the door to think of, this is a way to separate us from the ice, bi ice bikes and a real positive that you cannot get on an ice bike. And I really want to take advantage of that. Where can I get one and how much? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to evaluate that after the race. <laughs> I hope soon. Um, needless to say, the first ones are, are, are will be higher, but uh, that's just a scale issue of economics. So, are you planning on a production version in the not too distant future? We are. We are absolutely planning on it. But again, exactly when and how, we're in discussion with many companies at the moment. Um, and you know, I mean, literally the last five months, 90% of my time was getting the bike together. So, there's a little more work to do when we get back. Oh, the electricity was tricky. I mean. I can't tell you how many times we've been shocked. Uh, it, it's a running joke, who's got the biggest shock? And uh, we've all had the honor for a while. Um, nothing for you to be scared of, uh, particularly you corner marshals out there. As a marshal, you mentioned it briefly, um, a conventional bike, if it has big one, you've got to worry about fuel and possible fire, etc. But if this was slammed into a wall, are there any safety issues when it comes to picking up, moving it, doing anything? I mean, we're playing with electricity, is it? Yeah, it is a good question. I will tell you right now, and you know, I can only address what I know about this. At the moment, it is inherently a safer bike than an ice bike. An ice bike has such volatile fuel and things can happen so spontaneous. If this was to hit a wall or slide down, uh, the type of batteries that we have are just gonna break and lay there and do nothing. You are gonna lose the circuitry, you're gonna lose the system. Um, honestly, the biggest fear at the moment is the bike is quiet. And so if the bike was laying down and you went to grab the handlebars to pick up the bike, if it was on, it could drive off and you could incur more you know, damage that way. I was in the tech briefing, the tech guy put on rubber gloves. He looked like a proctologist. <laughs> and that's all the marshals have rubber gloves. I don't think in the future you guys will have 5,000 rubber gloves on around the circuit. Uh, the bike is very, very new. It's incredibly under uh, developed as far as practices. We have about 30 miles on it and we'll keep our fingers crossed. We've done the right work on the dyno and on the design side, but it just hasn't had that much actual track time. I mean, literally, it just got finished right before it came as you would kind of expect. We've done top speed simulations on a dyno that do account for aero drag, which is our best estimate, um, which of course goes up significantly in spe as speed increases. Um, we do believe that the bike, and of course you can change gearing and so, but I think it's, a, it's an honest 150 mile an hour bike. So just so you know, that's the single most unoriginal question. <laughs> it's the number one question. Uh, the answer to that is it's simply, you have a certain amount of energy on board and how you choose to use it is gonna affect either your performance or your range. So if you want high performance, you're gonna consume the energy quicker, which means lower range or vice versa. Um, that is an answer I can only guesstimate, and I could be wrong on this because we haven't put it through. Our guesstimate is around, in the United States anyway, a 55 mile an hour kind of speed, you should have over 100 miles of range. Not bad. Um, the, obviously here, we're hoping to do, you know, at points considerably quicker than that. And um, we will hope to use up, you know, 80 to 90% of our onboard energy within the 37.73 miles. So that's just, right, I will tell you, that's the, actually the one exciting point to me about this. There's another level now of, of strategy to racing. 
and that's how we have to figure out how to use the energy and and that's also a greener side to it isn't isn't it because in most cases you just put as much fuel in if you need more fuel you just put in a fuel bigger tank you don't really consider it too much some of the uh, just recently um, moto gp and stuff has limited the amount of fuel and they're very cognizant of off throttle how they're fueling and corner entry you know where they don't need the power how they're fueling and there's multiple maps that you can switch through Th this technology uh, though early is really opening up our eyes at least into a lot of ways on it just how we use and how we strategize power Most ice engines require 30 to 35 horsepower simply to turn them over to overcome their own frictions and um, I mean, it's amazing when you think about that. They're they're incredibly refined. They're not necessarily the best design um, So there is a certain amount of engine braking that has been well tailored through slipper clutches and fuel injection programs and stuff But nonetheless, there's some and riders want some and then there's the more um, I would call it um, active braking that we can apply like a brake and that also slows down the bike even more. That's a relatively simple process to do, harder to make smooth, but relatively simple to do. So that's a good thing because all the, there's no reason for electric stuff not to ultimately have that. We've got uh, Martin and Ed from Mission, and we've got Todd from Electric uh, Motorsport, and Brian from uh, from Brahma. Um, we started off actually with electric scooters back in 2001, and quickly found out no one wanted to go 30 miles an hour. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, me and my business partner at the time, Jeff Hagen, is a pro AFM rider, and I'm a motorhead motorcycle enthusiast. We thought we'd soup the things up, and we kept on souping them up more and more, and getting them faster and faster. And uh, until we had a product that was going about 70 miles an hour for about 50 mile range, we're looking forward to a good race. And uh, we've ridden around the track. It's not that far. <laughs> no, it's, uh, our team knows it's been an incredible, uh, incredible amount of work to get to be here. Um, and then to get to be here with a functional bike and to get to be here with a competitive bike, all these things are all uh, an incredible amount of work. And we've been working very hard to make our bike what it is. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a long journey and uh, we're really grateful to be here and we're uh, really looking forward to the competition. I'm uh, really excited about this bike from, from Moto says I think it's gonna be uh, really cool to have some some head-to-head -head competition and there's nothing quite like a little healthy competition to keep everyone moving forward. Uh, you may or may not know, but Bramo has two entries in the pro class this year and it sounds like Everybody keeps talking about the same five months that we've had to develop these projects. And I think the, the interesting thing is that uh, we did work very hard in that five months to get the one bike done, but the second bike actually came along uh, much, much more quickly. And I would expect that if these other teams were to go back and try to recreate what they've done, they'd find that they can do it much, much quicker again. So I think the, the path to commercialization for all of these bikes is really not as, as far out as a lot of people believe it to be. Oh, well, I think there's a lot of money that, it, that is chasing battery technology right now. Um, Exxon Mobil is investing a lot in battery technology. I think through this effort, um, we're, we're showing that we need better battery technology and we've seen that the battery companies are, are keen to become involved and help us push the technology along. Firstly, I mean, all this is only possible because of the teams. So our thanks really go to them. One of the really innovations that Michael has on his bike is a hot swap with battery packs. And something we're very keen to promote for next year is to open up a new class of racing to have two laps of the TT circuit, which means we would have to start thinking about a pit stop. And a pit stop means a hot, um, a quick change, battery changeover when the bike comes in and all the excitement of that, that standard is being set here both in terms of the technology, but also the standard that it gets proven here, developed here, and nobody else is doing this. So whatever happens, it'll be adopted from here. And that's really the a huge credit to the island and uh, to the people here who've uh, really made this happen. Thanks very much for coming.
a writer, by the way, who just got freaked out. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> wow. Um, What's the art but listen, dude, I rode in the grass just to see those guys in back. In the grass. In through crowds. I've got two monsters in here, but uh, I've got half the power they have. So they're carrying about half. I'm carrying about four and a half kilos. They're carrying about eight and a half. Uh, ten. 